So I was uh, watching this uh, movie review, uh, the Your Movie Sucks review of uh, freaking The Tomorrow War, that fucking really shitty Chris Pratt time travel alien fighting movie that is fucking garbage. And I was really fascinated because a huge comment fight started in the comments over just a throwaway line that YMS said about the movie. And he says, I'm, I'm sick of these movies where the only real defining character trait and motivation uh, of a male lead is, oh, my family. Uh, I got to do everything to protect my family. You know, I will do all this self-sacrifice shit about my family. And uh, somebody immediately identified that as a conservative concept and that, oh, conservatives only do this and, and the liberals do everything else or something like that. And it started this huge fight, which, of course, immediately descended into Godwin's Law and... um. I wanted to make this video because there was this some sort of this concept that eventually synthesized from this argument that, uh, okay, there, there's leftist movies, which are bad, and conservative movies, which are bad, and then there are like liberal movies that are everything else. And of course, that's nonsense. What I think, and I think reality defines a conservative or leftist movie as... And liberal and leftists are not in any way divorced from each other. They're the same thing, by the way. Um, <clears throat> is pretty concrete and obvious. So let's start with conservative movies, since I'm probably talking mostly to a conservative audience. And I think you all could admit this shit. Uh, usually a conservative movie is a vapid appeal to patriotism or a vapid uh, appeal to a very low-focused virtue uh those with fatherhood the whole i'm gonna you know throw myself into the future to fight aliens because i love my family probably counts um there's also of course the christian conservative angle all your sorts of jesus is real movies but those don't necessarily have to come with any particular kind of right-wing message because believe me there's some very in my opinion left-wing style deranged movies uh, that are very uh, Christian in nature. If you've ever seen, I think it's called The Shack or something like that, which is a movie all all about forgiving the uh, the psychotic murderer who raped, tortured, and murdered your little girl. Uh, that doesn't strike me as a typically conservative or right wing message at all. It's the same kind of what what's generally called pathological altruism, the sort of martyring yourself to forgive a stranger for something or martyring yourself to help a stranger for no particular reason other than, you know, destroying yourself is apparently good for you type concept, which I don't really think falls in line with the conservative message. In fact, pathological altruism is more likely to appear in a far leftist type uh, setup. So it's not even necessarily fair to come at it from a religious angle. A, a, a better example of, of a vacuous conservative propaganda type movie would be like a American Sniper or something like that. It's usually very a, a much about self-sacrifice for country and and for tradition and usually involves senseless tragedy at the end or or um overcoming inhuman brutality rather than simply propping up certain positive virtues that are more aligned with conservatism like I, I don't know. You can do duty without horrible shit. You can you can do drama without torture or death. But normally these kinds of movies that I think are shit and are very clearly conservative in nature and messaging uh, are, are more the former. So what is a leftist movie? Well, that's a little bit more obvious. Um, a leftist movie is a deconstruction film, period. Period. At this point in history, leftism actually isn't anything. Leftism doesn't promote anything. It doesn't create anything. So its propaganda is very peculiar and looks wrong to anybody who, you know, isn't mentally ill or deranged. Leftism only destroys things. That's what deconstruction is. It says, look at this. I'm going to destroy it and turn it on its head 
to show you that it's dumb or to show you that I think it's bad or that it should be destroyed. So leftist movies, as they very obviously are, aren't created. Leftist concepts aren't created. They parasitically attach themselves to pre-existing intellectual properties. So it starts off very simply with your Miles Morales instead of Peter Parker Spider-Man's and very rapidly approaches what we have today. It goes from blackwashing to gender washing to outright deconstructing the concept of the character itself and deconstructing every single kind of moral quality of the film. So that's one of the major problems I had with Invincible that I was shocked that tons of people who aren't normally politically unhinged uh, liked that movie, uh, that show, when it was a deconstruction show. Everything about it was about deconstruction. It was about deconstructing family, about deconstructing moral responsibility, about uh, deconstructing the very concept of of a hero itself, which of course has been done to death since the 70s and is very old and is only getting done in worse and less complex and less interesting ways to the point where it's just, oh, me smarty because superheroes are bad. I mean, even The Boys, which is a show I like, but I like more in line with a guilty pleasure than actually thinking the show is intellectually stimulating. But even shows like that rapidly get very low resolution and just, oh, oh superheroes are bad. Uh, corporatism are bad. Um, so... I shouldn't have to do a very long-winded video because I can just start throwing out very obvious examples. Take your any given CW uh, superhero movie. Um, superhero genre is the very most clear and obvious kind of deconstructionist uh, genre that everybody's aware of because it's so fucking popular. Okay, so I don't mean to say this is the only way this is done because it is absolutely done in a lot of other ways, like Tom Clancy's Without Remorse, uh, turning turning a, a, an established white British character into a whiny, bitchy, uh, grouchy black American. You know, just obvious shit like that. Um, <clears throat> but let, let's continue with the shit that everybody obviously understands, so I don't have to talk around in circles. Um, instead of having a show about Batman, we have a show about Bat, uh, woman and almost every single part of that show is at first, the first few episodes are, uh, you know, obvious messaging to the audience, like fourth wall shattering shit, like, uh, oh, the bat suit's perfect. Well, it'll be perfect when it's remade to fit a woman, like that kind of obvious in your face shit. But then it's like, what is this character's? reason for existence outside of um, replacing Batman with a character that's a woman. Well, we got to immediately pure, purity spiral down the way where it's not just that she's a woman in Batman. Uh, she's also a lesbian. Uh, the main villain isn't just a psycho who should be destroyed because they're a murderous psycho, but is in fact a sibling, the sister of Batwoman, who she actually protects from justice out of a selfish desire to resolve her personal issues with this character rather than to punish the villain for being a mass murderer. Um, no, instead we have to uh, center the entire conflict between this female hero and female villain as an interpersonal struggle. In fact, a fucking sorority issue uh, between sisters. Um, and, and that the, uh, the authority figures that are in the government that, that complicate this interaction between a vigilante hero and a, and a criminal villain, um, the authority figures are like their father, who is like the chief of this freaking police force called the Crows. So even though the show pretends at big concepts, whether it's big political concepts of, my, my Batwoman is approved of, disapproved of by part of the populace, not because she's a vigilante, but because she's a lesbian and approved of by part of the populace, not just because she's fighting crime, but because she's a lesbian, um, that kind of thing. So you get a lot of this selfish Mary Sue shit. And a lot of people think that Mary Sue has to do with an overpowered character, and to some extent that's true, but what a Mary Sue actually is, is a selfish self-insert of the writer. So, 
here's another example that some people may not be aware of, but is pl- blatantly obvious and is more or less admitted by the person who invented this character. Ray from Star Wars is not just a Mary Sue because, oh, she, uh, she never was trained by the Jedi, but is the most powerful Jedi ever because reasons, because she's a woman. No, she's the way she is because she's a selfish insert, uh, uh, selfish self insert of Kathleen Kennedy, which is why even though she's supposed to be a hero fighting an evil empire and, and uncovering, uh, the past and, and rediscovering the power of the Jedi and all that shit. She's supposed to be doing that, but the entire conflict is apparently about that she's actually descended from, from Darth Palpatine, so it's like a family struggle, and she's supposed to be fighting Kylo Ren because Kylo Ren is pure fucking evil, but no, it's actually she's in love with him and working through a toxic relationship with him, like this is the Gilmore Girls or, or Dawson's Creek or some fucking... A relationship drama, Beverly Hills 90210, instead of a space opera. That's leftism. Is since these people who make leftist shit pretend like they're tackling big, big issues like good versus evil or, or, you know, discrimination versus inclusion. No, if you ever actually critically examine any plot a leftist ever writes, it's like a selfish cry for help of a deranged person. Every fucking time. And you'll see that they are virtually incapable about talking about something bigger than themselves. They reduce big things down to deeply, deeply, plainly selfish and egocentric and ego-fucking-maniacal, narcissistic, pure, distilled, crystalline-fucking-narcissism is at the core of every leftist thing. Which is why, whenever they present conflict, they prevent, present things that, that they're very selfishly interested in. Which is why leftism doesn't ever show itself in virtuous ways, because the root of, of leftist impulses is greed and envy and hatred and violent sadism, resentment, jealousy, very, very basic emotions. Which is why these people can't tell sweeping moral lesson type shit. They can't address galactic war or saving the earth. They always have to reduce shit down to a very, very personal level and can usually only tell that story through the lens of a single person that the writer themselves identifies with. This is why the villains are always incomprehensible in motivation and don't make any sense and aren't very interesting and usually usually are just very extremely one-dimensional and that the only way they can flesh out that villain is by projecting shit onto them from the real world or like, oh, this villain's rich and I have something against rich people or this villain resembles Donald Trump because my entire life revolves around Donald Trump or this villain is my ex-boyfriend who I still have feelings for. That one's extremely fucking common. That's what a leftist picture is. And of course, since the only way they can kind of justify these things, rather than making a movie about a moral concept, they have to make the creation of the movie itself a moral concept. That's why we're always dragged down to all female Ghostbusters or every single redhead in existence is being replaced with a black person with curly hair. Um, Oh, every single male character is now a woman, and now even more so with the introduction of defeminizing everything because the male gaze and the reintroduction of feminist concepts Trojan horsed in with the LGBT shit since feminists lost the initial fight in 2014. We're reintroducing that kind of shit through social justice. So, so we're going to take a very clearly white female character. Here's one that's in the news right now, that the He-Man shit. Uh, Kevin Smith is under a lot of hot water, not because he deconstructed He-Man, because everybody expected him to deconstruct He-Man. It's already been done multiple times. But he said, no, this story is about He-Man. And then in episode one, they kill off He-Man and make it about Tila. Only Tila, instead of being a white, very feminine female character, is now basically a ripoff of the chick from the the last Airbender sequel, Legend of Korra, I think it's called. So she's brown now. She has a problem haircut. The the fucking 
half shaved, long on one side, shaved on the other. She's brown now for some reason. And of course, literally people have done this. They photoshopped the, the way this Tila character has been drawn. And all they did was replace her hair with a buzz cut, remove the reddening over her lips, and remove the liner around her eyes and just put her on the screen. It's a man. Her jawline is male. Her eye facial structure and brow structure is male. Her shoulder to hip ratio is male. She has no breasts to speak of, of course. And her musculature is outrageous, especially since they redesigned He-Man in a way that actually makes sense, where He-Man, He-Man is all burly and muscly, but Prince, uh, what's-his-face, I don't remember the name because I wasn't a big He-Man watcher as a kid. But the regular guy, rather than looking quite a lot like He-Man, looks like a kind of regular young boy, not, not a particularly athletic one either. And, and, and so that becomes more like a what like a, a Shazam type fantasy of, of, a, of a young normal kid turning into a, a male archetype. But if you compare like the way Prince what's his face looks like in comparison to Tila, who's not a supernatural character at all, she's just a you know woman, I guess. Um, she's clearly outweighs him by like 60 something pounds of raw muscle. She's taller than him by several inches. And it's just like Abby from the last of us. I don't mean to just run down, um, run down a, a bunch of examples. Everybody's already aware of, but it's weird that in order to promote a female character and to protect her, under the you know the Bechdel test of, well, this character can't be defined by being sexy, and she can't be defined by her relationship with a man. So the way we're going to portray that in the physical design of this character is this this female character is going to literally be a man. See, it's not hard to create a female character that's not sexualized. You put her in an outfit that that re doesn't draw the eye to her breasts or hips or butt. Um you don't even have to give her uh long hair, but you know maybe tie it back or not give her long hair, but you can give her long hair but kind of like tie it back or have it be like straight and it doesn't draw the eye constantly with the way it moves. It's not curly or tussled or whatever. That's easy to do. Just have her not wear makeup. Okay, that's fine. But, no, we can't do that. We have to have, make sure that the that in order to be modern and, and not sexualized, she has to have masculine hips, masculine shoulders, reduced or no breasts whatsoever. Her lips have to be razor thin, like this, instead of like a normal person. Her jawline has to be fucking like Roblox on either side of her fucking face. She has to have a crow magnon brow. Her shoulders have to come up to her fucking ears. Uh, and, and, and I mean, some people who do this have just outright admitted that uh, completely defeminizing uh, a female character is, is signaling to the transgender community. And I, I don't really understand why that is either. I find that really peculiar because I've known a fair amount of transgender people online and been been fascinated by them. So I, I talk to them because I'm interested in how they think and, and, and how they, they, they treat the their concept of, of the male and female image. And I can't recall any of them fetishizing the male form. In fact, gender dysphoria is a, a, feti a fetishization of the female form. And these people who do somewhat succeed in, in achieving that level of passing and shit usually radically reduce get facial surgery to reduce male shit. They they try to reduce the, the appearance of their Adam's apple. They deliberately pursue in an exercise like as hard as they can to increase the profile of their ass while decreasing the profile of their arm musculature. They get huge tit breast implants. They are very obsessed with makeup. The complete opposite of these people who are supposedly trying to signal to these people by erasing the female form from media, period. And that's not to mention the fact that generally the other way female characters are treated is in having the most basic and obvious male tropes. They usually have no families. They hate their fathers. 
Uh, so they, they, they usurp the, the son's war with the father trope. And uh, they usually are either, again, um, asexual or lesbians. Usually the latter. They're almost always lesbians. And, you know, I don't mean to go on and on about every aspect of this, but what a liberal thing is, is usually taking something that is a normal established uh, cliche or genre form and reducing it to everything I've just been talking about for the last 13 minutes, which is to take something that already exists and reshape it into this really twisted and deformed monstrosity. And if it even has anything to say, and it often doesn't, usually just shitting on the fucking game board or flipping the table or whatever is all the statement that the film ever makes. Take your, your Ghostbusters 2016. That uh, that didn't even have that much girl power or fuck fuck men in it or, or uh, anything. It just was literally like this really shitty, mindless, very poorly written, very poorly executed, terrible fucking movie. And the only real selling point of it besides um, this is just a shitty, shitty fucking comedy is... Oh, it was something that was a bunch of dudes now, and now it's a women. And people were already resistant to that. But that's only like level one of the usual things you get is, is we're going to shit on this pre-existing franchise in, in, in a very malicious way. Like your Last Jedi is just an outright act of hatred against the fan base. Your Tiger Cat's Roar, act of hatred against the fan base. It's like a deliberately malicious attack, and oftentimes admitting to it like thundercats roar the guy outright admitted he hated thundercats and he's deliberately shitting on it like he said it outright he admitted to it um or take your the last jedi where if there's any grander point to the entire fucking thing at all it's like capitalism are bad we're going to take a half an hour out of this endless movie and make it into this great morality play about how capitalists are bad and um of course, capitalism is, is not bad, and in order to think capitalism is bad, you have to have no fucking clue what you're talking about and been told a bunch of lies about how economics even fucking works um, that flies in the face of all objective reality. Like, oh, you know, how come capitalism doesn't just create the best possible society for its own society, but even to the point where it's uh, influencing other societies, it's usually bringing them higher quality of life, bringing them medicine and shit. Yeah, sure, colonialism all happened, but we also brought modern government and medical care and irrigation and farming techniques and shit to Africa, and, and you have to ignore the positive aspects of that influence just to reduce it to, oh, it was only slavery. It was only they came in and mined the resources and didn't do anything else. We don't you know, give hundreds of billions of dollars of Africa per year all of Western society doesn't just babysit that fucking entire continent to this fucking day. No, we don't do that. The white man's burden isn't even real. It's just we, we, we were all bastards and, 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 and they would have been Wakanda without us. Yeah, fuck off, you know, that kind of thing. So 24 minutes is about enough for this. But that's the difference. And make no mistake, you should be insulted by my, my um all American country music trucks and the Hallmark movies are conservative propaganda as well. Uh, the, the girl flees to the big city because she just can't stand country life. And then she comes back home and, and fucks the really hot farmer guy and, and, and re reattaches to her roots. That's conservative propaganda. Yeah. God's not dead. That kind of shit. The, that's conservative propaganda. The American sniper or, or World War II movies are, are kind of American propaganda, maybe more than kind of actually, are very American propaganda. And it's usually um, self-sacrifice, but not in a very a way that really makes moral sense. It's just like uh, uh, conservative propaganda is usually alignment to some sort of faceless and ill-defined concept. So, it, of course, duty and honor and service and shit is all very good. But it, those movies very rarely try to define the point of service to America or service to family or service to God. It just sort of presents the tautology that that's good and then goes about showing somebody discovering how they get emotional fulfillment out of that service without really defining that service or justifying it. Which is not to say that that service is wrong. It's just the way they portray it is usually stupid and anybody who isn't predisposed who isn't 
the the target audience of that, somebody who does isn't interested in being pandered to in that way, will not be convinced by these movies because much like the leftist propaganda shit, it's not designed to convince anybody who's indecisive or hasn't addressed this topic or is in fact on the other side of this topic of of the virtue of, of your way of seeing things. It's usually there to suck the fucking dick or or lick the fucking pussy of the person who's already deeply, deeply, deeply psychologically attached to this concept and is just pandering. Literally just pandering. But it's more than just pandering. But but pandering is still it. And and that's why, again, in conclusion, it all comes back to a very deeply personal and egomaniacal thing, which is why anyone who's actually interested in good drama or good fantasy or good hero's journey or is actually grown up in an area where they weren't bombarded with selfish trite, which is really on both sides of any kind of political messaging aisle at this point, they they see something like Star Wars and, and the really big concepts at play there even for something that's like mindless cape shit more or less but it's not mindless cape shit it's cape shit with really good uh moral subtext um even empire strikes back i think ascends beyond just cape shit into a really good epic um but it's really the only star wars movie that i think really deserves that that and half of return of the jedi is the only shit that's really addressing those actually more big brainy shit um but then, then you look at the sequel trilogy, and it, it it's just girly fucking mean girls, mean girls in space. Basically, it's fucking cancer, and it's obvious to anybody who wasn't already going in there looking for my mean girls in space. And and of course, at the end of the day, isn't it hilarious that that you've probably seen all those fucking BuzzFeed articles about like why am I so sexually attracted to masculine right wing men? When I know it's wrong, I just can't help it. And then, like, literally, like, if you really think about what the sequel trilogy of Star Wars is actually about, it's about Kathleen Kennedy's fucking deep desire to fuck a Nazi. (laughs) It really is what it is, if you look at it. Because if you look at how Kylo Ren is actually portrayed before they completely retcon him in the third movie, uh, he's he's an evil son of a bitch. And he's very selfish and, and hateful. And this this virtuous, good, upstanding character who's supposed to be our moral paragon, really, her entire motivation is to get across the galaxy to have sex with this guy. <laughs> it's like, wh- how is anybody sane supposed to look at this and see anything other than just trash? Just like literally like art fan fiction level um, fetishized cr- trash, like just sexual fantasies of uh, that shouldn't be you know, should be kept to the, yourself and not thrown out into the public and then portrayed as some sort of moral revolution in the cutting edge of cinema. Uh, that's enough. Thanks for watching.